My friends call me Len. I'm a detective. I work in Los Angeles. I'm an LA detective. Everybody in Los Angeles is busy. But Len isn't busy. He's sitting in his office. He's waiting. He has no work today. Nothing is happening. Then a man comes into the office. Len doesn't know him. The man is short and dark. He's about 40 years old. He's wearing a suit. The man is holding a gun. The gun is pointing at Len. I'm Frank. Come with me. Mr Blaine wants to speak to you. I won't go with you, Frank. I don't like Mr Blaine. I don't want to speak to him. Frank is a tough man. He laughs. He hits Len on the head. He hits Len hard. Len's eyes close. Len falls down. He falls onto the floor of the office. Len wakes up. He opens his eyes. He's sitting in a big chair. The room is very warm. There are lots of plants in the room. Where am I? Hello, Mr. Samuel. Welcome to my house. An old man is talking and smiling. He's Mr. Blaine. He's a very rich man. He's also a very bad man. You're going to help me, Mr. Samuel. You're going to find my daughter. Read these letters. Carmen is our prisoner. We want one hundred thousand dollars. Give us the money. Then Carmen will come home. Meet us on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Meet us at the bus station. The young ones. Father, help. Please give them the money. Carmen. Carmen is 18. She has long, dark hair. Her eyes are blue. She's beautiful. Mr. Blaine gives Len a photo. He says, I want Carmen back. Go to the bus station at two o'clock on Tuesday. Frank has the one hundred thousand dollars. He's going with you. Give the money to the young ones. Bring Carmen home. I'll pay you one thousand dollars. Len says, I don't like you, Blaine. I don't want your money. But Carmen is in trouble. She needs help. I'll help her. It's 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Frank and Len are at the bus station. Frank has $100,000 in a bag. Large buses are going in and out of the bus station. There are lots of people. But Len can't see Carmen. Frank and Len wait. Then they see Carmen. She's standing by a bus. A young man is with her. The young man is holding Carmen's arm. Hello. Are you Carmen Blaine? I'm working for your father. Who are you? I'm from the young ones. Where's the money? Here it is. Frank opens the bag. 
The young man sees the money. The young man lets go of Carmen's arm. Len holds Carmen's arm. Frank gives the bag of money to the young man. Suddenly, Carmen bites Len's hand. Len lets go of Carmen's arm. Ah! Oh, ah! The young man hits Frank. Frank falls down. Ugh, ow! Carmen and the young man jump onto the bus. The door of the bus closes. The bus drives off. It's going to San Francisco. Len can't get on the bus. He decides to get his car. Len decides to drive to San Francisco. Len is in his car. He's driving to San Francisco. He's going to find Carmen. Why is Carmen going to San Francisco? Who is the young man? It's Thursday. Len is in San Francisco. San Francisco is a big city. Len can't find Carmen. Suddenly, Len sees a sign on a building. The sign says, "The young ones." The building is a school for poor children. Carmen is playing with the children. Len stops his car. He goes to speak to Carmen. I don't want to go home. I'm happy here. I like working at this school. The one hundred thousand dollars is for the school. My father is a bad man. These papers show he is a criminal. Take the papers to the police. You stay here. Nobody will find you. I'll take the papers to the police. Good luck. It's Friday. Len is in Los Angeles. He's at the police station. Frank and Blaine are at the police station too. These papers show that you're a criminal, Blaine. Huh. I'm tired. I have no money. But I have an exciting job, and I like to help people. That's why I'm an LA detective. Old Henry Reif Schneider and his wife Phoebe loved one another the way people do who have lived together a long, long time. They were simple farm people. Their world was their fruit trees, cornfield, and backyard with its pigs and chickens. The rest of the world was far away, like stars in the sky. Sometimes Henry worried about death. During his worries, he would raise his old voice and say, "Phoebe." Where is my corn pipe? You are always taking things that belong to me. Now you hush, Henry. His wife would say, "If you keep talking like that, I will go away. And then what would you do? There is nobody to look after you. Your corn pipe is on the table where you put it." Old Henry knew his wife would never leave him. The only leaving he feared was death. He often wondered how he could live without Phoebe. When she wanted him to get a pail of water, Henry liked to say, "Do this, do that," always asking me to do something. Women are never satisfied. Phoebe would smile. 
She could see the inner happiness shining in his eyes. Henry talked sharply, but he never forgot to get water and wood for the fire. In this way, they lived happily in their simple world. One day, in the early spring, Phoebe became sick and died. Old Henry watched them put her body in the earth. Neighbors asked Henry to come and live with them, but he would not leave. He wanted to be near the place where his Phoebe lay in the earth. He tried to work around the farm, but it was difficult to return to an empty house at night. At night, he read the newspaper, but most of the time, he just sat, looking at the floor, wondering where Phoebe was and how soon he would die. For five months, he lived like this. Then, there was a change. It happened one night after he had gone to bed. There was a bright moon in the sky. Its silver light fell on the old chairs and table in the bedroom. The moonlight on the chair and the half-open door made a shadow. The shadow looked like Phoebe. She was sitting by the table the way she had done so many times before. Phoebe, he called in a weak voice, have you come back? The shadow in the chair did not move. Henry got up and slowly walked toward it. When he came near the table, he saw that there was nothing on the chair but his old coat. Another night, he thought he saw her again. He felt a soft wind blow in the room. When the wind blew away, the shadow of Phoebe went away too. A third night, when he was sleeping, she came to the bed and put her hand on his head. Poor Henry, she said gently. I am sorry you are alone. He awoke and was sure he saw her leave the room. Phoebe had come back. Night after night he waited. Then, one morning, he awoke with a surprising new thought. Perhaps she was not dead. Perhaps Phoebe had just gone away. They had argued about the corn bite, and she had left the house. Yes, that was it. She was always making jokes about leaving him. This time, she had really gone. That morning, he started to walk to the nearest neighbors. Why, hello, Henry, said Farmer Dodge, who was taking grain to market. Where are you going this morning? Have you seen Phoebe? asked Henry. Phoebe who? Farmer Dodge knew Henry's Phoebe was dead. My Phoebe, Henry said sharply. Who do you think I mean? You must be joking, said Farmer Dodge. You cannot be talking about your Phoebe. She is dead. Dead? Not my Phoebe. He left me this morning while I was sleeping. We argued about my corn pipe last night, and that is why she left. But I can find her. She went over to Matilda Race's farm. Yes, that is where she is. Henry started to walk fast down the road. The poor old man is sick in his mind, Dodge said to himself. He has been living alone too long. Henry met no one until he reached Matilda's farm. His Phoebe and Matilda Race had been good friends. Phoebe must be here. 
he opened the gate and walked to the house. Matilda opened the door. Why, Henry Wright Snyder, what a surprise. Is Phoebe here? Henry asked. Phoebe? Which Phoebe? Why, my Phoebe, of course. Henry smiled a little. You do not have to keep it a secret. She is here, isn't she? He looked inside the house. Well, Matilda Ray said, you poor old man, come in and sit down while I get you some coffee and food. I will take you to Phoebe. I know where she is. While Matilda worked in the kitchen, she talked to Henry, but he was not listening. He was thinking about Phoebe. He decided she was not there. I will go now, he said, getting up. I think she went over to the Murray farm. Then he was out on the road again. It was like this for many weeks. Every night he returned to his house to see if Phoebe had come back. Soon, everyone in the area knew old Henry and answered his questions. I have not seen her, they would say, or, no, Henry, she has not been here today. It was in the seventh year of looking when Henry came to Red Hill. It was late at night, and he was tired and sleepy. Years of walking and very little food had made him thin. After a while, he fell asleep, with his head resting on his knees. When he awoke, it was still dark. The moon shone brightly through the trees. Henry saw a light move across the road. It danced through the woods. Was it Phoebe? He jumped up. He was sure he could see her in that light. Yes. There she was, the young Phoebe he had known many years ago. Suddenly, he remembered her young beauty, her warm, friendly smile, the blue dress she had worn the day he first met her. Phoebe, he called, have you really come? Have you really answered me? He began to feel young and strong again. He ran to follow the moving light. Then a soft wind blew through the leaves, and she was gone. Phoebe, he cried, do not leave me. Please, please stay with me. He ran as fast as his old legs would go. When he came to the top of the hill, he looked down into the valley of shadows below. Tears of happiness came into his eyes when he saw Phoebe again. Yes, there she was, down in the valley, smiling up at him. She was in the same blue dress. He waved a hand and seemed to say, Come, come with me. Henry felt the strong pull of a new world where he and Phoebe would always be together. He gave a happy cry. Wait, Phoebe, wait. I'm coming. The next day, some farmer boys found Henry at the bottom of the hill. His body was broken. There was a soft, happy smile on his face, the same smile he had known when Phoebe was alive.